Now let's put all this together and kind of get a picture of the kind of dire consumption streams that can be supported by the wealth of retiring American households. Single-person households at the 25th percentile retire with a consumption annuity worth $9,500. Again, that's all in. That's all their wealth used to fund this hypothetical consumption annuity. Two-person households at the 25th percentile have a consumption annuity of $12,000 per person. A little bit better, above the poverty line, but not by much. Single-person households at the 50th percentile have a consumption annuity worth $16,600 and two-person households at the 50th percentile have a consumption annuity worth $20,000. This is the picture, this is the limited resources of American households entering retirement. Now, what are we going to do about this? How are we going to help these households emerge with more wealth, a better retirement? I want to offer five solutions, some of which we need to rely on the government to execute, some of which individual firms, individual households can pursue. The first is we can probably raise returns by cutting fees in a lot of these 401k accounts. Large employers have typical fees of about 30 to 50 basis points. That's fine. That's great. We're not going to cut those fees. Small employers have 401k fees of about 150 to 250 basis points. That's 1.5 to 2.5 percent of the percent of the assets each year going for fee payments. We need to push those numbers down. We need to find a way to generate returns to scale and agglomerate those accounts and get lower fees. Secondly, we need to increase access to defined contribution plans. As I mentioned earlier, only 60 percent of U.S. households work for an employer that offers defined contribution plans. The other 40 percent doesn't even have access. So we've got to increase access. And we should require not every employer, but most employers, except the very smallest employers, to offer a defined contribution plan at their workplace. Third, we should raise participation by introducing automatic enrollment at all employers, again, except for the very smallest ones that don't have these plans. Next, we should raise the typical savings rate by using much higher default savings rates in the 401k system. Right now, the typical automatic enrollment savings rate in the U.S. system is 3% of your income. So the firm is automatically enrolling you at a 3% savings rate, which is woefully inadequate for most households. We should be using much more aggressive default savings rates, and we should auto-escalate those savings rates. So if you go in at 6, you should go up automatically to 7, 8, 9, 10 as your tenure increases year by year. Right now, the typical worker is auto-enrolled at 3% with no auto-escalation. And finally, we should cut leakage. As I said earlier, leakage is a huge problem in the U.S. system. If people left the money in these accounts, it would be okay. But in fact, for every dollar that goes in, 50 cents comes out. Now, I don't know how to cut leakage. And the evidence that I showed you about people liking illiquid accounts is just an experiment. No one would think that that evidence resolves the question of how we should organize the American, the American saving system. But I do want you to think about how we could reduce leakage by giving people the opportunity to have more illiquid accounts, to have accounts that aren't quite so easy to drain decades before people retire. 